Good afternoon. Have you ever come through Ballygan and you've come out the Cumber Road and you've looked up to the left and you've seen this massive black building and it looks for all the world like uh, an old convent and you say to yourself what is this building? What is the history behind this? Well at the moment this building is owned and has been owned by the Presbyterian Church uh, and the local Presbyterian Church which is Trinity Presbyterian Church Ballygan and it uh, is used, being used as, as church halls and uh, uniformed organisations would meet up in it and, and it's used for storage purposes and, and all the rest of it. So it's, it's not redundant uh, by, by uh, a long chalk. So it's private property as well, so I'm not going to go in even into the car park area, the extensive car park. Um, so what is the history behind this, this building? It was built in and around 1840, 1884 and 85 and it was completed 1886 and this building uh, was originally um, planned as a res residential secondary school and these two wings at each end because the building is symmetrical these two wings were meant as, as dormitory wings and uh, that's what it was planned as and it was built for £7,000, the stately total of £7,000. And it's built in sort of a, a gothic style, a basalt, and it's stark and it's angular. And I have to say, it's, it's a wee, you know, it's reminiscent of something that you'd see on the Scottish borders. So obviously the, the architect was maybe Scottish orig origin. I don't know. Um, but it's a bit bleak looking, I have to say. Um, but it really, really stands out. Apparently these uh, end blocks here are called uh, Crow's, Crow Stepped Gable End Bays. Now there's an architectural feature for you. Crow Stepped Gable End Bays. And whenever this building was being built in the, eight, the 1880s, you know, the population and the number of houses uh, in Ballygan were, were minimal. There was about 200. So whenever this massive building was, was being constructed, it, it, it stuck out. You know, everybody could see it. It was a landmark. Uh, and you could see it. And, and I'm sure it was talked about from, from miles around. It's imposing, it has to be said. And it's four storeys um, in, uh, with one in the basement. And if you count the tower, well then you're going up to five storeys. And I'm told that a workman lost his life in the construction of this building and it's marked by the white stone at the top there. I, I don't know whether that's... I believe a workman did die, but uh, whether that's the, the white stone that uh, commemorates his, his death, I don't know. Um, it is also told to me that the time is short uh, was 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 uh, was put up there in remembrance of that gentleman who fell, um, uh, possibly pointing to um, you know the fragility of life and and uh, a life cut short. And uh, I'm going to be a, you know, a warning to the rest of us that uh, we don't live forever. Um, anyway, the, the strange motto on the tar clock here, and the tar clock, uh, uh, does it work? I'm not sure. I'll just check my, my phone now. It appears, to, it appears that the, the, the clock does work. It's five to two. Um, so why was this built in the first place? And you can just, you know, £7,000 back in the 1880s was, was quite a substantial sum. It was built uh, by a local man, uh, Alexander Orr Reed, 
and he was uh, uh, the benefactor behind this and it was bought um, for, for as I say and bought and built for £7,000 and it came with seven acres of ground with it as well and it was meant to be a memorial to this man Alexander Orr Reid uh, whose son His son had uh, tragically died in a, a, a shotgun accident. Now, there's speculation over that, uh, the, whether it was uh, a suicide or not, just don't know. And the, this building was built to remember uh, and commemorate the, the lad's life. And uh, originally the building had connections with the, the Balligan Presbyterian Church, but uh, Mr. Reid, the benefactor, fell out with the local minister, a Reverend Woods at that time. And um, then what happened next was that uh, the benefactor, Reid, who built the building, provided the money, he, he died in 1886, and he left the building to his friend, a man called David Henderson, to be used as an orphanage. And there was a trust fund and all the rest of it. And it was, uh, it was called the Olivet Hall. So uh, it was called the Olivet Hall. And if you uh, put two and two together and work out Olivet, a lot of um, buildings around Northern Ireland um, that are named Olivet are, are connected with the Elam Church. But anyway, Henderson and his wife, uh, despite local Presbyterian objections, started off this home. And uh, Henderson's uh, just didn't come to this uh, kind of activity, um, you know, uh, you know, with a blank s slate. They they actually ran another home uh, on the Crumlin Road, and and they were taking in homeless children uh, from Belfast Street children. And it was very commendable, very admi admirable what they were doing, providing uh, safety and food and, and uh, lodgings and all the rest of it, and trying to give them a wee bit of education. What happened next? Well, Henderson's wife was unhappy with her matron role, so she up and left him. <laughs> and she departed for America. <laughs> she got a brave distance away from him. And they divorced and she remarried and had a couple of children out in America. Um, Henderson, in the meantime, was a bit strapped for money, so he went up and down the country and he used these youngsters to raise, uh, the youngsters from the home, to uh, plead for money. And uh, the home was run by a stand-in matron. So, um, all went reasonably well in the early days, but by, by 1896 there were a host of complaints coming in about Henderson and uh, children living in, in squalid, ne neglected conditions, uh, dirty, fleas, poorly clothed, poorly fed, and it appears that Henderson may well have been holding back on uh, money for the, uh, for the children. And uh, Henderson and the matron uh, were duly brought to court. But the night before uh, Henderson's trial, didn't he gas himself? He committed suicide. Um, 1907, the, 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 well, the, whole, the home closed, I believe. In 1907, uh, the home was reopened. Um, but by 1918, it had closed. And by that stage, Cumber Presbyterian uh, Trinity Church had uh, uh, resumed an interest in, in uh, this massive big hall and they bought the entire building. And the whole idea was to be uh, that it would be converted to, to a national school and a lecture hall and teacher's residence. And in fact, that's what happened. Uh, um, there was a headmaster in the 1950s, a Mr. Thompson, who lived here and um, it also served as a doctor's surgery for uh, Dr. Wallace for a period of time. So uh, that's, that's, that's what happened, but 
by the 1980s, um, it was no longer fit for purpose for, for a school. So in the 1980s, a new school was built beside it, and that was Alexander Dixon's Primary School, which we see here. So that's the story of this Time is Short building, or the Olivet Hall. So you can wonder no more. Um, the mystery is solved um, and it's st still getting good use. There's a couple of the activities uh, that run in this building. So we've got this club operating and the Sunday School and Bible class running from the 8th of September all being well as regards this virus but that's the story of this amazing building and I've seen uh, old photographs and this whole area was laid out in uh, lawns and shrubbery and trees and uh, vegetables and flowers and everything else and it's sad that it's no longer there but that's the, the progress of time. I could never, I couldn't find who the architect was uh, to see how, how the uh, Scottish influence came about. Probably it was from, he was somebody from Scotland. History and interesting places right on our doorstep. I believe there was a stained glass window here at one stage. I'm going to try and get round the back to have another wee look. And this is another view of the Time is Short building, the Olivet building from 1886 and it is still being used, um, extensively used by Ballygown Trinity Church which is sitting down here. I'm told that there, there are activities on in this big massive building every night of the week. Girl Guides, Girls Brigade or whatever else goes on here, I, I'm not too sure. And it has been built on too at the back. So uh, must be doing a, a, a good work uh, for the community in uh, the, the Presbyterian Trinity church here at Ballygan. It's a massive, massive building this. And yet another sh shot of the Time is Short building in Ballygan. And I'd love to see around this to see what it's like inside. See if there's any pertinent architectural features 